God. Good morning, everyone. So, thank you. So, I'm here to give a short exhortation on consecration. Consecration. But I'll first of all like to thank my pastor, PF, and the church admin for this platform. Thank you. So, consecration. What is consecration? Romans 12 1. Romans 12 1. Okay, I'll read from here. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is simple consecration. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So, when you became born again, when you received the life of God, you became a new creature. But then, this does not just end here. What next? What happens after? You're supposed to live a life of service. You're supposed to present your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So consecration is not just for pastors or for priests or for fathers or ordained ministers. It is for everybody. The New Testament says that everybody in Christ should and can experience this. Praise God. Consecration is simply giving yourself to the Lord to become a living sacrifice. What we just read in Romans 12, 1. It is dying to yourself and living to do the will of God. So in the Old Testament, um, sacrifices were set apart for God by being placed on, on the altar. This means that whatever you give to God, you cannot take it back. Whatever you give to God belongs to God a hundred percent. God is not asking you to tie yourself up and put yourself on the altar. No, not at all. He's saying that it should be a living sacrifice. You should live for him. When you consecrate yourself to the Lord, you become a living sacrifice. You put yourself completely in his hands. So before consecration or before you gave your life to Christ, you used to live your life in pursuit of your own will, your own ambition. It was just all about you, yourself. But now that you are in Christ, now that you have said that, yes, Lord, I want to live for you, you have to live for God a hundred percent because you believe in God. Consecration is voluntary. Um, let's read Levit- Leviticus 12. Okay, before we read 12, let's read 1 verse 2 to 3. Leviticus 12, 1 verse 2 to 3. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a bond sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a meal without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Praise God. So it is unto the Lord and it is voluntary. God will not force you to do anything. You're not under compulsion to do anything. But you should do this because, why? You belong to God. Because you are presenting yourself a living sacrifice unto God. Because you want to serve him. Consecration is final. Leviticus 27, 28. Notwithstanding no devoted thing that a man shall devote unto the Lord of all that he hath, both of man and beast, and of the field of his possession, shall be sold or redeemed. Every devoted thing is most holy unto the Lord. So in the Old Testament, when an, an animal is sacrificed, it can never be brought down again because it is declared holy. Once you are in Christ, you are holy. It is once for all. You can't be holy today and then be unholy tomorrow because of one something that you did. No, you are declared holy once for all. It is fine now. Praise God. And this is what Jesus meant in Luke 9.23. Pastor Jide, Luke 9.23. Amplified, please. Like the amplified version. Okay. Okay. And he was saying to them all, If anyone wishes to follow me as my disciple, he must deny himself, set aside selfish interest, and take up his cross daily, expressing a willingness to endure whatever may come, and follow me, believing in me, conforming to my example in living, and if need be, suffering or perhaps dying because of faith in me so why should you consecrate yourself to god because you belong to god because you belong to god that is it first corinthians 6 19 to 20 do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have received from god you are not your own we are bought at the price therefore honor god with your bodies if you live you live for the lord 
If you die, you die for the Lord. You belong to God 100%. And your consecration is a response to God's redemptive work. It is a response to the finished work of Christ. Praise God. Consecration is recognizing Christ's ownership of you. You know that you don't belong to yourself. You are not of yourself at all. But you are of Christ 100%. Praise God. The purpose of this is so that God's will may be done. Jesus does not have hands on earth. You are his hand. He does not have legs or lips to preach the gospel to the lost. It is you. He walks through you the same way the Father walked through him. Praise God. But first of all, God will not force himself for you. You have to first offer yourself to him. He will not overstep your boundaries. He will not overstep your will. Except you present yourself a living sacrifice to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can you just bow your head and say, Lord, I belong to you. I am not on my own. Lord Jesus, I belong to you because you have bought me with a price. Thank you for paying the highest price for me. I belong to you a hundred percent. I give you my body, my life, my job, my time, my money, and everything that belongs to you. Your will alone, O Lord. Amen.